Violet Brandon. I've been in many fights, small ones and big ones. Now Mart reveals the meanings of the coded images covering their bodies. This is the hell butterfly, and I got it so that I can spread my wings in hell. The ink explains a code that is both ruthless and brutal. You take a pistol or something and go to another gang to off somebody. For centuries, subcultures ranging from ancient warriors to outlaws have organized themselves around the symbols etched into their skin. 80,000 strong, the Yakuza is the biggest organized crime syndicate in the world. They say there is no field of business that Yakuza are not involved with in Japan. They infect all aspects of Japanese society, both the legal and legal. The top executives hobnob with movie stars, entertainers, singers, and actually control what is the Japanese version of Hollywood. It's kind of a throwback to America in the 50s. Like the Italian Mafia, those who are chosen to join must fully commit, taking an oath of honor. It's like living a devil's life. No criminal group in the world is more closely identified with tattoos than the Yakuza. Their trademark is a full body suit of ink. When Japanese people see tattoos, they think Yakuza. Yakuza equal tattooed people. Osaka, the commercial center of Japan. Nothing gets done here without the Yakuza. What did you do? This is a dragon. Dragons have long been known to mean success. Horizon tattoos the Yakuza. To get your whole body tattooed, you need endurance. It hurts and you will bleed, and there is no turning back. Horizon grew up as part of the criminal underworld. I've never viewed my father different because he was Yakuza. He was my father, and that's all that mattered to me. When Horizen was only 12, his father died in a horrific auto accident. Since I was the oldest son, I became the head of the household. I started working, and I did my best to make money for my family. Eventually, he was lured into the Yakuza. There was a man that helped me out a lot, and he was a Yakuza. I started hanging out with him. I started to assist him, and we became close. And for him, I joined the organization, and that was the beginning. Horizon quickly learned what it meant to be a member of the Yakuza. I can't speak for anyone else, but I have used violence. We would go to Pachinko and Mahjong places to collect the money. That was our job. Horizon's body is covered in ink. Maybe one out of 100 go so far as to get ink behind the knees. The area behind the knee is a crossroads of sensitive nerves, making it one of the most painful places to get inked. This is a tiger. This is a dragon. This is Fudo Myo. You can see the fire around him. Fudo Myo literally means the immovable. This is the guardian of the Buddhist treasures and also a angry spirit that destroys evil and obstacles and anything in its path. Um, a kind of vengeful deity. And that fierceness, of course, appeals to the Yakuza. This is the way traditional tattoo should be. Once it gets in your body, it's alive. 
As a tattoo artist, Hori Zen has a unique relationship with the men he inks. The Yakuza often defer to the artist to choose the designs that will permanently decorate their bodies. And they spend many hours having their bodies covered. If you're a tattoo artist, it's almost certain you'll be affiliated with a gang. Otherwise, you'll get shaken down. Akihito Ikeuchi joined the family when he was 18. He turned to Horizon when it came time to start his bodysuit. Ikeuchi's tattoos mark him as a Yakuza. He has left a strip unadorned down the middle. Mine is a style called Munewari. Because tattoos are taboo in Japan, they are usually kept hidden. The bare skin in the middle allows marked men to keep their ink covered when wearing a traditional kimono. There is also a practical function. It's there so that you have a place to sweat. If you don't leave an area for the skin to breathe, it's very, very bad on the liver. Like most, Ikiuchi started at the bottom of the gang's hierarchy. When you decide to join the Yakuza, you become like a private in the army. You go through this Japanese ritual of exchanging cups of sake with the boss. And then he will say, from now on, I am your parent and you are my child. There are 22 major Yakuza groups, each one organized in a regimented structure. The Yakuza groups are structured like a family. At the very top is the Oyabu. And Oyabu middle wing is like father figure. And everyone under the Oyabu makes a pledge of loyalty to him and they become his kobun, basically his children. And within the kobun, there'll be like an older brother and a younger brother. Company president on top, vice president, director, then manager. There are millions of guys, and the guy at the bottom would never see the sun. The young Ikiuchi was quickly frustrated by the strict order. I couldn't talk back to a corporal. When they ask you to get cigarettes, you must go and get them. At the mahjong games, I'd have to pour the tea, and I'd have to change the ashtrays at their card games. My idea of a Yakuza was a guy who'd strut down the street with young girls on his arm. But I was just pouring tea and kissing ass. No one really ordered me to get tattooed. At the beginning, when I look at other people's tattoos, I wanted to get more than them. Basically, I wanted to look better than the others by getting more tattoos. The traditional Japanese method of tattooing is called tabori. The style takes years to complete. Done by hand with a steel spike attached to a long rod, the painful process is very slow. You are pierced with needles. No matter where it is on your body, to be honest, you feel pain. Eventually, it's like a competition to see how much you can take. Ikiuchi wanted his tattoos to be done in the old style, which used mostly red, and black ink. The red is traditionally made from a mixture of iron sulfate and green vitriol, both toxic. This means only small areas can be tattooed before fever and weakness set in. Ikiuchi wears two tigers on his chest. The emblem of the samurai, the tiger is greatly admired by the Yakuza. The tiger is one of the fiercest of all animals. And the Yakuza, of course, pride themselves on being intensely fierce, ferocious, unrelenting. The Japanese believe that all images on the body must be in balance and harmony. Designs often include mirror images. To put it another way, everything that has a front also has a back. Most designs are paired. The tiger and the dragon complement each other. 
日本では流行というてあの昔から。In Japan, we have an ancient design concept called 流行 or tigers and dragons. ほら。This is a tiger. This is a dragon. These are 流行。The tiger fends off demons and disease, while the dragon brings good fortune. Dragons are also considered fearsome and extremely powerful, not unlike the yakuza themselves. The completed work of art bears Horizon's signature. Nowadays, Horizon makes his signature much bigger than this. The signature is also a status symbol. If the tattoo artist is famous, it's a sign that you have wealth. That's why the artists do it, not just because the artists want people to know it's their work, but the yakuza want the tattoo so they can brag to other people, look, I have the best tattoo artist doing my tats. Master artist Hori Zen joined the yakuza when he was 20, quickly rising to become the leader of his gang. He married, started a family, and began tattooing. But his yakuza life and his work as an artist were in conflict. I knew I couldn't be a yakuza and be a tattoo artist. If I was in the yakuza, I needed to do my duties as a member. But once you're in, getting out isn't easy. Once you make a pledge to the gang, the only way out is to cut off your fingers. Marked is decoding the tattoos of the yakuza. The coded images revealing the secrets of these violent, organized crime families. Yakuza literally means loser, a losing hand. The gang's name comes from the worst hand in the Japanese card game Hanafuda. Eight, nine, and three, or Yakuza. The Yakuza trace their origins to the 17th century machioko, or servants of the town, who protected their villages from outside forces. This Robin Hood image still appeals to the Japanese. The Yakuza like to say about themselves that they are a ninkyo dantai, a chivalrous group, and the phrase they often use is, "We fight the strong and help the weak." The Yakuza were made up of two groups, takia. Or street merchants, and bakuto, or gamblers. When we talk about modern yakuza, we're really talking about the bakuto, the gamblers. And from gambling, they've long since branched out into extortion, corporate shakedowns, blackmail. The modern yakuza began after World War II as black marketeers. The largest group, the Yamaguchi Gumi, were essentially a dock workers union in Kobe that expanded from shipping and controlling the docks to. Selling things illegally, black market sales, drugs. I would collect the payments and charge people unreasonable interest. Pachinko parlors, for instance, would pay protection money. The yakuza demand loyalty, and ink became the ultimate proof of dedication. If you had a tattoo. You are yakuza, and if you didn't, you are respectable citizen. The full body suit took it even further. Yakuza used tattoos to show endurance. It's the actual act of the tattoo itself that is significant, and how much of the body it covers, and how many hours they spent doing it. You see, like if he actually takes off his shirt, you see him—he's full body tattooed. Just like, wow, here's a guy that can take hours and hours of pain. That's kind of scary. The yakuza have taken what was always a stigma and made it a mark of pride. The earliest criminal tattoos in Japan date back 1,600 years. By the 18th century, a complex system of marks was used to identify criminals, indicate their crimes, and their number of convictions. Some criminals would have the character for dog tattooed on their forehead, which in that period meant criminal. Soon, tattooing began shifting from a means of branding 
to a distinct stylistic choice. Despite the criminal association, firefighters began marking themselves. They believed a tattoo of a dragon would keep them safe from fire. But criminals continued to bear ink, and in 1789, a law was passed prohibiting tattooing throughout Japan. The art wouldn't become legal again until 1948, when General MacArthur liberalized Japanese laws after the Allies' victory. It's very common to see soldiers with some kind of tattoo on. So it really became part of the culture after the Second World War. This is a chrysanthemum. In Japan, chrysanthemum flowers are put in the caskets at funerals. Horishula is an ex-Kai. His tattoos are for protection. If I get killed somewhere in the mountains, or die like a dog, alone, where nobody will give me flowers, I'm prepared for it, since I already have chrysanthemums on my body. Chrysanthemums symbolize persistence and determination. Horishula lives his life as he pleases, on the margins of Japanese society. When I was in junior high and high school, punk rock came to Japan. I had my hair in a mohawk and had a safety pin through my face and I guess I was a weird kid. Horishula became a target and carried a knife to defend himself. I used to fight a lot. So the police arrested me many times. And every time I went to jail, I made new Yakuza friends. What's scary about the Yakuza is their unity. They may not be so strong individually, but when they are a team, they will be happy to sacrifice their own lives. If you underestimate them, things could get scary. 1988. Horishula and a mohawk-wearing friend were walking down a street when a group of men approached them. He hit my friend's head, but that was unacceptable to me. I said, wait a minute, and went charging at him. It was three of them against me. Horishula went after his friend's attacker. I started beating the hell out of him when someone choked me from behind and said, if I did anymore, I'm dead. So I thought, oh, they are going to kill me. What am I going to do? And I reached into my pocket where I found a knife. So I stabbed him with that knife. I put brass knuckles on and punched the Yakuza. And when I kicked him with my boot, I smashed his eye. He was arrested and convicted of attempted murder. I was in jail for about three and a half years. For the Yakuza, tattoos can serve as protection on the inside. Even guards steer clear of those bearing ink. In prison, the Yakuza have the highest authority among prisoners. Horishila was strong and tough. The Yakuza wanted him to join, but Horishila wasn't prepared to make the commitment and resisted. He was released from prison at 25. Horishila had been interested in the art of tattooing for some time and began studying with a master. I had never actually looked at the traditional Japanese styles in detail before because they were on Yakuza's and I was scared. But when I started studying it, I began to think Japanese tattoos were beautiful. His teacher agreed to take him on under one condition. My master agreed I could study with him as long as I didn't exchange cups of sake. In other words, join the Yakuza. Horishila completed his studies and opened his own shop. His reputation as an artist grew. That's when an old friend from his past reappeared. I had this friend I knew from before I went to prison, a younger guy who I did bad things with. 
and he contacted me saying how are you and that he was now a yakuza and was about to establish his own kumi or group. I was scouted out as a vice president. Harishila didn't shake people down or knock on doors to collect money. I didn't do much Yakuza stuff at all. I just put tattoos on the people in the group. But he cherished his independence and found he couldn't run his business and serve the Yakuza at the same time. The Yakuza world is a very strict world and so is the world of tattoo artists. It's impossible to do both. I said, I'm sorry, but I have to quit. Harishila was lucky. He got out with no consequences or retribution for distancing himself from the Yakuza. This is a talisman. A talisman is an object meant to avert evil and bring good luck. Ontekimetsubo means all my enemies will perish. That's what the tag means. The butterfly on his back signifies a means of escape when facing ultimate judgment. This butterfly is called Jigoku Ageha. Jigoku Ageha means literally hell butterfly. It's so that I can spread my wings even if I go to hell. The Taboi process is painful and takes years to complete. You breed and it hurts. It's about endurance and it is a fight with yourself. Mart is exposing the tattoos of the Yakuza, Japan's mafia, applied in the ancient tradition with simple needles and wooden swords. The reason I thought the Yakuza looked so tough was because of the tattoos. They show that you can endure more pain than regular people. Master artist Horizon was a Yakuza boss before leaving the family to focus on his ancient craft. I have no idea how many people I have tattooed. I never counted. It is in the thousands. Horizen uses a process called tabori, which literally means by hand. The basic technique has remained unchanged for centuries. Artists who use this method pride themselves on tradition. It's a slow, painstaking way to get inked, but the results are worth it. Tabori allows for greater control, incredibly saturated colors, and precise shading. If you use a machine, the color will be thin and eventually start to fade. The permanence really shows in the art of Tebori. Hori Zen is preparing his studio. These are the tools I have learned to use in traditional Japanese Tebori. These are Japanese ink cakes. I use four of them. The process of making the ink or sumi begins with solid cakes of pigment. Hori Zen gets liquid ink by rubbing the cake with a sazuri, a flat stone tool moistened with water. Grinding the cake too hard or too fast will make the ink too thick. You have to keep rubbing the ink cake for 30 minutes. Rub like this, 30 minutes. Making their own ink gives artists incredible control over color. The ink is very good. I would like to keep it secret. Mixing the ink makes it silky. It makes beautiful color come up. The four colors traditionally used in Japanese tattoos are red, green, indigo, and yellow. To embed the ink into the skin, Horizon must make a special tool out of a wooden sword and needles. This is the tool for tebori. This is made from bamboo. This is a small sword. 
Before being attached to the end of the sword with silk thread or metal clips, the steel needles are sharpened. Sharpened like this, grab about five needles and from this angle, roll the needles on the file. And you can see the top getting sharper. Try to stick your skin, and if it gets stuck in your skin, the needles are sharp enough. The number of needles determines the thickness of the line. Hori Zen arranges 18 needles in three rows, then ties them to the end of the sword. This is how you do it. Stick, stick, and lift the skin like this. Hori Zen is ready to work. He welcomes longtime client Mr. Moroda. Hori Zen has been working on Moroda's bodysuit for over a year. The process is time consuming and painful. Sessions need to be spaced out and kept relatively short. Some people come in once or twice a week for two to three hours. Horizon works on shading the tattoo on his back. He is very strong and able to deal with the pain. The part I'm working on must be very painful. I'd say that out of 100 people, probably 80 just stop halfway through. Maybe 20 people go all the way to the end. It will take Horizon another six months to complete the whole bodysuit. Horizon is taking marked inside a secret Osaka bathhouse where Marota and other clients often meet. On the streets, these men look like everyone else. But in the safety of this private bathhouse, they reveal more than a decade of Horizon's work. These men have marked their affiliation to the Yakuza with ink. Artists often choose tattoos for their clients. Some tattoo artists will actually meet with the person who wants the tattoo and talk to them several times to get a sense of who this person is, and what their character is like. Horizon decodes Moroda's back. This is an original design. It is Mujibori, a tattoo inside another tattoo. It is called Kintaro's calf. Kintaro also called the golden boy, is a symbol of strength in Japanese legend. Often depicted in red, it shows the ability of the wearer to absorb the toxic ink. The carp is a traditional symbol of masculinity. Their courage and tenacity was revered by the samurai. This is Oni Wakamaru, one of the characters that appears in the historic Japanese fighting tales. Oni Wakamaru was a fierce warrior who slayed the giant carp that killed his mother. In Japanese mythology, carp turn into dragons after making the treacherous trip up the Yellow River. This carp took me about a year to complete. Dragons and carps are what I'm good at. Dragons serve as a traditional symbol of power. This is Ipikiryu. Lone Dragon. It's been maybe four or five years since I finished it. This is a work in progress. It's called a token fighting sword dragon. There's a sword and the dragon is wrapped around this sword. Fangs bared, the wrathful dragon protects the wearer from evil spells and dangerous enemies. <laughs> The Yakuza often wear tattoos with protective qualities. Kanon Bosatsu, the goddess of mercy, is a popular choice. A Bosatsu is a Buddhist saint. 
others are inspired by the natural world. Yakuza often wear cherry blossoms, the beautiful flowers symbolizing the gangster's life. The cherry blossoms bloom a very short time. They're beautiful while they bloom, but they quickly wither and die. So it's a kind of Japanese shorthand for it. Live fast, die young, leave a good-looking corpse. Horizon's Yakuza clients return to the streets of Osaka and their underground lives, keeping their tattoos hidden. The public will assume that a person with a tattoo is a Yakuza and be terrified. Mart is going inside the dangerous world of the Japanese mafia. The Yakuza only care about money and status. I try to keep them not too close and not too far. Members of the Yakuza operate on the fringes of society. In this world, if you want to get anywhere, you have to take a pistol or something and go to another gang to off somebody. The Yakuza are heavily involved in human trafficking, prostitution, and more. But in this male-dominated world, the women of the Yakuza have tales to tell. My name is Shoko Tendo. I was born in Osaka. Shoko Tendo has a strong connection to the Yakuza. Her father was a high-ranking boss. Everybody who came to my house had tattoos, including my father. Shoko knew from a young age, her family was different. She witnessed firsthand the violent rituals of the Yakuza. I saw one of the young guys from the Yakuza, bloody, apologizing to my father. He bowed down towards my father, and on top of a white cloth, there was a pinky finger. Deciding she needed to speak out about her experiences, Tendo risked her life by exposing the gang's secrets in her autobiography, Yakuza Moon. It details her life in this dark and secretive world. I noticed all these men who looked scary were scared of my father, and they all called him Oyabun and were very polite to him. If my father told them to get something, or prepare something, they were on their way before he could finish his sentence. When Shoko was 16, bad business decisions meant financial ruin for her father. In order to repay debts, he borrowed more money. One of the men he borrowed from desired Shoko. Since he liked me, he said if I became his lover, he would clear the debt my family owed him. And I only had one option. I had to say yes. The relationship lasted for three years until I was 19 years old. Shoko began working at what's known as a hostess club. Hostesses light cigarettes, pour drinks, and engage in flattering and flirtatious conversation. Although clubs deny it, Prostitution is common. Shoko met a young Yakuza gangster named Ito. He took an immediate interest in her, and they began to date. But the relationship soon turned violent. Ito was jealous and would beat Shoko whenever he grew suspicious. But after every time he beat me, he was a different person and cried and apologized and said he would never do it again. And I was too stupid and I kept believing that he would go back to being the nice guy that I first met. Eventually, a brutal beating sent Shoko to the hospital. I was so pissed off that I ordered the doctor to sew me up without anesthesia. The doctor told me it would be too dangerous and the pain would be too unbearable. 
この傷を見たら何の傷かわかるやろうと。I told the doctor, I know you know why I have this cut on my face, and if a man can beat me this bad, then you can sew me up without anesthesia. 顔に傷が入った時にさすがにも思います。When I got the scar on my face is when I knew I needed to change. Shoko had plastic surgery to hide the wound left by Ito. The Yakuza world was more than Shoko could endure any longer. Her tattoos became a way to take back her life. とにかくこの自分にけじめをつけようと思ったんですね。とにかくそのその人と別れるっていう目線。I decided to start a new chapter in my life, not only ending the relationship. But I wanted to change myself from the inside. For Shoko, getting tattooed was empowering. It was very rare at the time for women to have tattoos. If they had any, they were probably yakuza girlfriends, and it was usually a dark sign if you had a tattoo. Tendo was covered with traditional Japanese tattoo designs, not unlike the yakuza men who have haunted her since childhood. This is a dragon. You see, the dragon on my right arm is facing down and holding a ball. で、それは私が。That's a metaphor of me catching opportunities. And then with my left arm, which is connected to my heart, I take the opportunities into myself. 背中の入れ墨は。On my back is 地獄だよ。Who was a prostitute? Shoko's back piece was inked by master tattoo artist Horiedo. His signature is alongside the dominant image, Jigoku Dayu, or Lady from Hell. 女性らしくこうイメージして日本的なこの To make it very feminine in a Japanese way, I chose a courtesan design. The image dates back to the 15th century. Legend says Jigoku Dayu was forced into prostitution after losing everything in a robbery. Working her way up, she eventually became a top courtesan for the Zen priest Ikkyu. He taught her Buddhism and gave her a literary education. Horiedo saw the parallels to Shoko's own life. Jigoku Dayu was the right mental representation for her back then. My impression was that she was a real yakuza woman. When the tattoo was being done, she never complained about the pain. Getting a tattoo closes doors for relationships, jobs. Marriage. But it was worth it because I was finally able to separate myself from all the baggage I was carrying. Getting my tattoos was cleansing for me. Shoko Tendo was able to escape her yakuza life, but her book and her tattoos made her a marked woman, always looking over her shoulder. Tattoo master Horizen also wanted out of the yakuza, but to leave, Horizen would need to draw blood. To break my bonds to the yakuza, I knew I needed to chop off my pinky. The yakuza are marked with intricate designs, full body suits setting them apart from society. Master tattoo artist Horizen was a yakuza boss, but the violent ways of the gang were getting to be too much for him. There are men who died for me and went to jail for me, and I couldn't continue living with that on my conscience. To be honest, I don't like being violent or harming people. The shakedowns weren't worth it anymore. Horizon's heart was elsewhere. Because I had something I loved, which is being a tattoo artist, I went in that direction. To dedicate himself to the ancient art of tabori, 
he would have to leave the Yakuza. To do this, a member must make a sacrifice by cutting off part of a finger. You will have to bring it to the Oyabun once you cut it off. I told him I was going to become a respectable citizen. Please. That used to be a way of saying, I want out. Here's my finger. I apologize for the problems I may be creating in doing this. Horizon took a knife and prepared for the pain. I asked my wife to bring a cutting board and a knife. I said, this will never happen again. And I chopped it off. Horizon presented his bloody sacrifice to his Oyaba. Anyone can cut a pinky off. That's just physical pain. But the people that really felt the pain were my wife and my kids. Once I realized how much I hurt them, there was no way I could continue being a Yakuza. I promised them with my words and actions, it would never happen again. Now Horizen is only involved with the Yakuza through his work as a tattoo artist. Traditional Tobori tattooing is a fading art. Western style tattoos are now growing in popularity. Tebori is much more painful and it goes so deep, obviously. Also, time is money, so for people in a rush, you just use a machine. Younger tattoo artists, like Harishila, are using modern machines to ink designs. When I started, I really admired the Western-style tattoos you often saw on rock stars. His own ink stands apart from traditional Yakuza-style bodysuits. But he is like the Yakuza men in one important way. I try to hide my tattoos as much as possible. These days, like in other countries, Japan has many people who wear tattoos visibly as fashion. But I believe that tattoos are meant to be hidden. I am still drawn to it, no matter how inconvenient. In Japan, people with tattoos are still barred from public bathhouses, beaches, and swimming pools. When my daughter and I go to swimming pools in the summer, I can't go in the water with her because I can't wear a bathing suit. I'm the only one there in a long sleeve shirt and full-length pants. But attitudes are shifting. Everybody looks at tattoos as if they are normal. They think it's cool, and they welcome it more. The Yakuza are also changing. The younger members are becoming more secretive, avoiding clear indications of affiliation. Instead of full body tattoos, some favor a simple design or phrase inked on their upper arm. Younger Yakuza aren't willing to submit to the time and trial of getting full body tattoos. It's such an identifying mark. The tattoos are going to be more of a liability. You see more and more Yakuza who are not tattooed. Ikiuchi belongs to the old school Yakuza. But after marking himself with a full body suit, he had a change of heart. I couldn't take money from someone who said they didn't have any more food for the next day. Ikiuchi now lives an honest life working as a truck driver, but he is forever marked by his ink. No matter where I am or what time it is, these tattoos will still be with me. It's a constant reminder of his criminal past. My biggest regret is getting these tattoos. If I could, I'd just go back to a normal, clean body. Tattooing remains a vital part of Japanese subcultures, and it's becoming more accepted by mainstream society. It used to be if 10 customers came in, 8 or 9 would be Yakuza. But nowadays, half would be Yakuza, and half would be normal people.
topping the cake with a sazuri, a flat stone tool moistened with water. Grinding the cake too hard or too fast can make the ink too thick. You have to keep rubbing the ink cake for 30 minutes. Rub like this, 30 minutes. Making their own ink gives artists incredible control over color. The ink is very good. I would like to keep it secret. Mixing the ink makes it silky. It makes beautiful color come up. The four colors traditionally used in Japanese tattoos are red, green, indigo, and yellow. To embed the ink into the skin, Horizon must make a special tool out of a wooden sword and needles. This is the tool for tebori. This is made from bamboo. This is a small sword. Before being attached to the end of the sword with silk thread or metal clips, the steel needles are sharpened. Sharpen like this. Grab about five needles and found places to collect the money. That was our job. Horizon's body is covered in ink. Maybe one out of one hundred go so far as to get ink behind the knees. The area behind the knee is a crossroads of sensitive nerves, making it one of the most painful places to get inked. This is a tiger. This is a dragon. This is Fudo Myo. You can see the fire around him. Fudo Myo literally means the immovable. This is the guardian of the Buddhist treasures and also a angry spirit that destroys evil and obstacles and anything in its path. Um, a kind of vengeful deity. And that fierceness, of course, appeals to the Yakuza. This is the way traditional tattoo should be. Once it gets in your body, it's alive. As a tattoo artist, Horizon has a unique relationship with the men he inks. The Yakuza often defer to the artist to choose the designs that will permanently decorate their bodies. A complex system of marks was used to identify criminals, indicate their crimes, and their number of convictions. Some criminals would have the character for dog tattooed on their forehead, which in that period meant criminal. Soon, tattooing began shifting from a means of branding to a distinct stylistic choice. Despite the criminal association, firefighters began marking themselves. They believed a tattoo of a dragon would keep them safe from fire. But criminals continued to bear ink, and in 1789, a law was passed prohibiting tattooing throughout Japan. The art wouldn't become legal again until 1948, when General MacArthur liberalized Japanese laws after the Allies' victory. It's very common to see soldiers with some kind of tattoo on. So it really became part of the culture after the Second World War. This is a chrysanthemum. In Japan, chrysanthemum flowers are put in the caskets at funerals. Horishula is an ex-Khan. His tattoos are for protection. Carried a knife to defend himself. I used to fight a lot, so the police arrested me many times. And every time I went to jail, I made new Yakuza friends. What's scary about the Yakuza is their unity. They may not be so strong individually, but when they are a team, they will be happy to sacrifice their own lives. If you underestimate them, things could get scary. 
1988. Horishala and a mohawk wearing friend were walking down a street when a group of men approached them. He hit my friend's head, but that was unacceptable to me. I said, wait a minute, and went charging at him. It was three of them against me. Horishala went after his friend's attacker. I started beating the hell out of him when someone choked me from behind and said, if I did anymore, I'm dead. So I thought, oh, they are going to kill me. What am I going to do? And I reached into my pocket where I found a knife. So I stabbed him with that knife. I put brass knuckles on and punched a Yakuza. And when I kicked him with my boot, I smashed his eye. He was arrested and convicted of a Telco was 16. Bad business decisions meant financial ruin for her father. In order to repay debts, he borrowed more money. One of the men he borrowed from desired Shoko. Since he liked me, he said if I became his lover, he would clear the debt my family owed him. And I only had one option. I had to say yes. The relationship lasted for three years until I was 19 years old. Shoko began working at what's known as a hostess club. Hostesses light cigarettes, pour drinks, and engage in flattering and flirtatious conversation. Although clubs deny it, prostitution is common. Shoko met a young Yakuza gangster named Ito. He took an immediate interest in her, and they began to date. But the relationship soon turned violent. Ito was jealous and would beat Shoko whenever he grew suspicious. But after every time he beat me, he was a different person and cried and apologized and said he would never do it again. And I was too stupid and I kept believing that he would go back to being the nice guy that I first met. Eventually, a brutal beating sent Shoko to the hospital. A literary education. Horiedo saw the parallels to Shoko's own life. Jigoku Dai was the right mental representation for her back then. My impression was that she was a real Yakuza woman. When the tattoo was being done, she never complained about the pain. Getting a tattoo closes doors for relationships, jobs, marriage. But it was worth it because I was finally able to separate myself from all the baggage I was carrying. Getting my tattoos was cleansing for me. Shoko Tendo was able to escape her Yakuza life. But her book and her tattoos made her a marked woman always looking over her shoulder. Tattoo master Horizen also wanted out of the Yakuza. But to leave, Horizen would need to draw blood. To break my bonds to the Yakuza, I knew I needed to chop off my pinky. The Yakuza are marked with intricate designs, full with a gang, otherwise you'll get shaken down. Akihito Ikeuchi joined the family when he was 18. He turned to Horizon when it came time to start his bodysuit. Ikeuchi's tattoos mark him as a Yakuza. He has left a strip on a door down the middle. Mine is a style called Munewari. Because tattoos are taboo in Japan, they are usually kept hidden. The bare skin in the middle allows marked men to keep their ink covered when wearing a traditional kimono. There is also a practical function. It's there so that you have a place to sweat. If you don't leave an area for the skin to breathe, it's very, very bad on the liver. 
Like most, Ikiuchi started at the bottom of the gang's hierarchy. When you decide to join the Yakuza, you become like a private in the army. You go through this Japanese ritual of exchanging cups of sake with the boss, and then he will say, from now on, I am your parent, and you are my child. There are 22 major Yakuza groups, each one organized in a regimented structure. The Yakuza groups are structured like a family. At the very top is the Oyabu. Getting a tattoo closes doors for relationships, jobs, marriage. But it was worth it because I was finally able to separate myself from all the baggage I was carrying. Getting my tattoos was cleansing for me. Shoko Tendo was able to escape her Yakuza life. But her book and her tattoos made her a marked woman, always looking over her shoulder. Tattoo master Horizen also wanted out of the Yakuza. But to leave, Horizen would need to draw blood. To break my bonds to the Yakuza, I knew I needed to chop off my pinky. The Yakuza are marked with intricate designs, full body suits setting them apart from society. Master tattoo artist Horizen was a Yakuza boss, but the violent ways of the gang were getting to be too much for him. There are men who died for me and went to jail for me, and I couldn't continue living with that on my conscience. To be honest, down the middle, mine is a style called Munewari. Because tattoos are taboo in Japan, they are usually kept hidden. The bare skin in the middle allows marked men to keep their ink covered when wearing a traditional kimono. There is also a practical function. It's there so that you have a place to sweat. If you don't leave an area for the skin to breathe, it's very, very bad on the liver. Like most, Ikiuchi started at the bottom of the gang's hierarchy. When you decide to join the Yakuza, you become like a private in the army. You go through this Japanese ritual of exchanging cups of sake with the boss, and then he will say, from now on, I am your parent, and you are my child. There are 22 major Yakuza groups, each one organized in a regimented structure. The Yakuza groups are structured like a family. At the very top is the Oyabu. And Oyabun middle wing's like father figure. And everyone under the Oyabun makes a pledge of loyalty to him and they become his Kobun. Basically his children. And within the Kobun there'll be like an older brother and a younger brother. Company president on top. Vice president. Director. Then manager. There are millions of guys. And a guy at the bottom would a bosatsu is a Buddhist saint. Others are inspired by the natural world. Yakuza often wear cherry blossoms, the beautiful flowers symbolizing the gangster's life. The cherry blossoms bloom a very short time. They're beautiful while they bloom, but they quickly wither and die. So it's a kind of Japanese shorthand for it. Live fast, die young, leave a good-looking corpse. Horizon's Yakuza clients return to the streets of Osaka and their underground lives, keeping their tattoos hidden. The public will assume that a person with a tattoo is a Yakuza and be terrified. Mart is going inside the dangerous world of the Japanese mafia. The Yakuza only care about money and status. I try to keep them not too close and not too far. Members of the Yakuza operate on the fringes of society. In this world, if you want to get anywhere, you have to take a pistol or something and go to another gang to off somebody. 
The Yakuza are heavily involved in human trafficking. Time to start his bodysuit. Ikiuchi's tattoos mark him as a Yakuza. He has left a strip unadorned down the middle. Mine is a style called Munewari. Because tattoos are taboo in Japan, they are usually kept hidden. The bare skin in the middle allows marked men to keep their ink covered when wearing a traditional kimono. There is also a practical function. It's there so that you have a place to sweat. If you don't leave an area for the skin to breathe, it's very, very bad on the liver. Like most, Ikiuchi started at the bottom of the gang's hierarchy. When you decide to join the Yakuza, you become like a private in the army. You go through this Japanese ritual of exchanging cups of sake with the boss, and then he will say, from now on, I am your parent, and you are my child. There are 22 major Yakuza groups, each one organized in a regimented structure. The Yakuza groups are structured like a family. At the very top is the Oyabu, and Oyabu middle wing is like a father figure. And everyone under the Oyabu makes a pledge of loyalty to him, and they become his kobu, basically his children. And within the kobu, there will be like an older brother and a younger brother. Company president on top, vice president, director. Worth it anymore. Horizon's heart was elsewhere. Because I had something I loved, which is being a tattoo artist, I went in that direction. To dedicate himself to the ancient art of Tabori, he would have to leave the Yakuza. To do this, a member must make a sacrifice by cutting off part of a finger. You have to bring it to the Oyabun once you cut it off. I told them I was going to become a respectable citizen. Please. That used to be a way of saying, I want out. Here's my finger. I apologize for the problems I may be creating in doing this. Horizon took a knife and prepared for the pain. I asked my wife to bring a cutting board and a knife. I said, this will never happen again. And I chopped it off. Horizon presented his bloody sacrifice to his Oyaba. Anyone can cut a pinky off. That's just physical pain. But the people that really felt the pain were my wife and my kids. Once I realized how much I hurt them, there was no way I could continue being a Yakuza. I promised them with my words and action. 